So hi again, everyone. What an incredible pleasure and honor to oppositely launch into this second anniversary edition of Living Histories. Um, lots of histories made um, with um, the Living Histories talk from Christine Jacobs Wagner from Stanford University. Um, I am so thrilled. I'm turning it right over to you, Christine, to tell us about your living history. Thank you so much, uh, Shri, and thank you all of you for being there. It's really my, my, my honor to be, uh, to be here with you, to share you a little bit about my story. So first, I, was, um, I grew up in Belgium, which is a small country in Northern, uh, Northern Europe. And throughout my life, my strongest positive influence has been my mother. This is really an incredible woman, um, super hardworking, uh, resilient, and strong and smart. And, but she had a really tough time. I mean, she didn't have an easy life because she basically got pregnant of my oldest sister when she was in high school. And so meaning that uh, she had to her education was basically ending there and uh, she had to get married into, you know, got into a marriage that didn't turn out to be great and, um, and had to start working immediately. But she really worked hard to make sure that my siblings and I had all the opportunities that she didn't have. And, um, and, um, and basically it was super important for her that we pursue our dreams. So she was really amazing. Now, uh, Unlike many of my colleagues, I mean, nobody could have told that I was going to become a scientist or a professor when I was growing up, even myself, because I was absolutely obsessed by sport. And um, the one sport that I stuck with was badminton, and I did a lot of uh, competition, national and international. And I think that they really gave me a taste for, uh, for uh, adventure and a taste for um, interacting with uh, very diverse communities, you know, different backgrounds. And also, uh, because of course that requires a lot of training, um, it gave me, I think that it basically helped me to, uh, to gain discipline and grit and resilience because, because I was injury prone. And I tell you, there was nothing more soul crushing than training super hard for competition and not be able to compete because, uh, because you injured, which happened to me a lot, unfortunately. Then uh, for my undergraduate studies, so I did it. Uh, I did uh, undergraduate studies in biochemistry at the University of Liège in Belgium, and um, and I was always a good student. But one thing I was absolutely atrocious at is to learn languages, and I realized that knowing English was going to be important. And so what I wanted to do for the last year of my degree, so it was a five-year degree. The last year is entirely research. And uh, is to basically do research in um, English speaking uh, country. And this was really facilitated by my professor in enzymology, Jean Marie Frère, who uh, set up an internship uh, with, um, with, with a terrific person, Stefan Normark at Washington University. And, and I just want to highlight this that this is something that I really love about academia is that you have those exceedingly generous people because I had zero research experience and yet they financed both of them for my internship um, just out of kindness. And because of that, I got into the field of bacteria and that was completely random and, and protein chemistry at the time. Okay, so then I went back to Belgium to do the next six months uh, in John Fair lab and then started my PhD. And so I did get my degree in Belgium. So I got a Belgian degree, but out of the five years, I was only one year in Belgium because basically what I did is that I went to many different labs and, and different countries. So the first one is, for, is through um, the Belgium Ameri American Educational um, Foundation uh, Fellowship. I went back to Washington University for one year for my first year of my PhD. Uh, to, uh, to study the regulation of antibiotic resistance uh, of an antibiotic resistance mechanism, I'm mostly doing molecular biology. Went back to Belgium for one year to learn protein chemistry. And then instead of learning um, the technique from reading papers or by trying to collaborate with others, what I did is that I would bring my projects to many different labs and then do the experiments over there. So because of this, I ended up spending time at uh, Paris Orsay. Uh, went to Tuff University and also spent two years at Kalinska Institute in Sweden. So it was really like I was a traveling student and that was an incredible experience because I learned, I mean, it really gave me again a taste for adventure and, 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 um, 
And I met a lot of people. So it was not only extremely enriching from a professional standpoint, but also from a personal standpoint. Then for my postdoc, I went to, I went to Stanford University in the, in the Department of Developmental Biology and specifically in Lucy Shapiro's lab to study this you know, amazingly weird, beautifully weird bacterium, bacterium called Colobacter crescentus that divide asymmetrically as this uh, produced food or cells that have a different fate. And the reason why I went to Lucy's lab is not only to study this fabulous you know, organism, and also to, to learn genetics, because at that point I had gained some expertise in molecular biology and biochemistry, and I felt it was important to expand my expertise. But also it was to work with Lucy. And I think this is basically a lesson that I learned is that there are so many interesting scientific questions that really what we study doesn't matter as much as the people that we're working with. And Lucy is an incredible mentor, um, an incredible scientist, and really an incredible businesswoman and human being. And she's so charismatic that, um, that in fact, I had lined up four, five postdoc interviews. She was the first, her lab was the first postdoc interview and I canceled the other four after meeting her because she's that charismatic. Okay, and so one thing that worked out really well for me is to take chance. That is to do experiments that sometimes, you know, just because you say, what the heck, let's see what happens. So what happened is that I, I was at the time in the Department of Developmental Biology. So the, that was, it was the late 90s. And at the time, uh, so it means that there were a lot of the labs were not microbiology lab. They were studying the development of eukaryotic system. And at the time, there was a lot of excitement around GFP. So to basically visualize proteins in, in, in live cells. But people were not doing this in bacteria because bacteria were thought to be just to have no spatial organization to just be bags of molecules. However, since everybody was playing with GFP around me, uh, I decided to, uh, to, to tag a cell cycle kinase that I, was in, that I was interested in. And since Lucy didn't have a fluorescence microscope at the time, of course, eventually she, she, she got one, I decided to do uh, what I did during my PhD is to go to a different lab. And I went to uh, Rich Lozick's lab who is really a pioneer in bacterial cell biology. And so in there, I, I got lucky. So uh, the kinase shows that it has specific localization where it accumulates at one end of the cell cycle, um, at one end of the cells during the cell cycle. So this was really important for us because it made us realize that, wow, cells have um, um, much more spatial organization than we anticipated. And that really shaped uh, the future of my lab. So then I got uh, a job of an assistant professor position at, uh, at Yale University, where we now, you know, like I wanted to learn genetics and, and biochemistry and molecular biology, which I did do my PhD and postdoc, but really we had to become cell biologists. And I think this is really something that was, has been important to me is to say, well, let's basically become something else if we need to be. And we started to use a lot of, um, of microscopy and to, to study cell cycle function and cell morphogenesis. And, and it was important to use microscopy because those processes are very dynamic and they're also spatially related. Another thing that worked out quite well for me was to follow up on surprising observation. And I'm just going to show you one example um, that, was, uh, that was made by a former graduate student, Matt Kabeem. So what he was studying at the time is not important. It's completely irrelevant to what eventually we did with this, uh, this experiment. But basically, what I'm, go I'm going to show you, this is a movie where we look at a protein filament that is detached from the membrane, and it's just simply diffusing into the cells. Then about now, the cells stop growing, and we still don't know why. I mean, the cells stop growing on that slide for reasons that we don't understand. But what was amazing is that the protein filament also stopped moving. And this is one of those kind of like, wow, you know, uh, kind of sublime moment where we say, what, what is happening? Because of course, if it's diffusing, there is no reason why diffusion should stop when now the cells stop growing. And so after a lot of work that were done by other peoples, because this was Matt continuing on his PhD, um, that was completely unrelated to this observation, we realized that the physical and the chemical property of the cytoplasm matter. So we started to study the material properties of um, of the cytoplasm. So one thing that has worked out really well for me is to bring in my lab people from very different uh, disciplines, in particular physicists, which I thought you might appreciate. 
And to interact with physicists has been really uh, absolutely amazing. And so that has forced us to uh, force me to uh, venture in, uh, in stuff matter physics and also in polymer physics, thanks to individuals in my lab that have those kind of backgrounds. And this has been super fun and it made me a really strong believer of interdisciplinary research. Now, because I've been such a big fan of interdisciplinary research and working with people from very different disciplines, um, after nine amazing years at Yale University, I had the opportunities to move my lab to Stanford University and to join the biology department, but also to join the CAMH Institute, the Serafin CAMH Institute. And this is a picture of, uh, it was a brand new building, which was also a plus. It was a pub, by the way, which is also nice. And, and this, and this, um, this, this, this institute is really fantastic because it embodies interdisciplinary research. There is basically a lot of chemists, physicists, engineers, and, and, and biologists that are interested in, in, in solving questions and often together. So it's an extremely uh, collaborative environment. Now, in addition of, uh, this is very useful for our research, but also this, 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 this environment is not only uh, uh, really great to do fundamental research, but it's also very friendly for translational research. It's something that is becoming of interest uh, of mine because now, in addition to studying Colobacter and E. coli, which are two wonderful model systems, we're also studying uh, Borrelia burgdorferi that can cause Lyme disease. And this is a bacteria that is highly unusual for a bacteria. I mean, it has very weird uh, features, and some of which I'm list listing in the slide. It's also causing an, a disease that is really increasing in numbers. And to our delight, uh, most of this cell biology has not been explored, meaning that we have opportunity. And I think this is something that is important to do is to exploit those opportunities. Okay, so my take home messages is that what has worked really well for me is to diversify uh, my interactions. So really to have in my lab and outside my lab, talking to people, that think differently, have very different kind of perspective and to have different sources of inspiration because I think this is the best way to do creative research. The second is to seize and also create opportunities. So for example, you know, I really encourage my trainees and others to, um, to go to different labs just for a short internship to learn a technique and uh, to learn how, you know, how they do research. And there's actually a lot of short-term fellowships that are, um, that are less competitive than the long-term fellowships that people might, might consider. Also take chances, you know, um, most field in my opinion are cultural. That is that they tend to ask the same kind of questions and they tend to use the same kind of techniques. They're kind of evolving in the same way. But sometimes there is a technique from a different field that is common for that field, but not so much for our field that could be uh, could really um, create new insight in a very surprising and exciting ways. Same thing for biological questions. You know, sometimes, you know, you have biological questions from different fields that could be very applicable by, to our own field. The other thing is that what I find useful is to be flexible. So yes, we have to, it's helpful to start with a hypothesis, but sometimes we make some weird observation and it is, it is, it is fine to change the story. So it is fine to change our hypotheses. I think it's fine to change the biological questions and to pursue basically all those data. They are exciting. And then finally, I think that, you know, when it gets rough, it's important to reflect on our achievement to put things in perspective. And finally, I want to give a huge thanks uh, to all the people that have really enriched my life, such as mentors, students and pro star colleague friends and family for the tremendous support so thank you thank you so much christine wow uh, on behalf of the audience i'm clapping and um while we await more questions to drop into chat let me get started with a question uh, which is that the theme of the talk seemed to me to be seize the moment follow your heart uh, take a chance. Yes. And uh, in particular, the story you told about Lucy and running into this one person and being wowed by her charisma, amongst other things, and just canceling your other interviews made me wonder if you would unpack for us 
what what are the sort of guiding principles in which interactions you choose to capitalize on? Well, okay, so I think that there is multiple level there, right? Which is one hand is, um, you know, the scientific aspect, which is also, which is always great. But also I think that what is fun with our job is that we, we can get to work with people that we really enjoy working with, right? And I think this is super important because I think that, you know, there's so much science to discover. And from my perspective, I mean, science is just so fun and so interesting. And many of us ended up doing what we're doing and by chances, right? I study, study bacteria just because I had some professor who basically financed my trip. And that's the only reason why I started to, to study bacteria. But working with the people that are inspiring, I want to be, I want to work with people who inspire me. And they can be trainees or they can be mentors, they can be junior colleagues, or they can be senior colleagues. And I think this is basically the fun of it, right? Is to work with very inspiring people. Wow. On that super high as note. As mentor and as scientist, you know, like and as human being. Again. Uh, thank you so much. On that super high note, I'm going to close the recording and thank you again.